the camera four is not showing in there. It would look bad anyway. My neck is tight. How's that? Oh. Hello, Framingham, and welcome to Flyer News. I'm Ben Weiner. And I'm Julie Carson. Coming up today, we'll be giving you another update on the East Coast weather and news of a reported new planet. To close out the show, Evan Marinovsky and I have a live New England Sports Minute covering the Patriots' surprising defeat at the hands of the Denver Broncos. All that and more today on Flyer News. Yesterday, our own Lacey Edwards presented the state of the weather along the East Coast. With the new revelations in the past 24 hours, Lacey has prepared another segment of Weather Watch to give an official update on this weekend's blizzard. Whenever there's a big change in the world of weather, Lacey is always ready to inform the public. Let's get that update now. Good morning, Framingham. We've all seen the snow starting to pile up outside after this weekend's blizzard, but for once, Boston did not get the worst of the snow. Days after the blizzard hit the East Coast, the entire region is dealing with one problem, where to put all of the snow. The blizzard began on Friday, blanketing cities with massive amounts of snow, causing devastation and flooding and traffic. At least 36 people died as a result of the storm, and many of the deaths were a result of snow shoveling. Authorities warned residents about trying to shovel, saying that the stress of such exertion would bring on heart attacks. Airlines canceled more than 1,800 flights on Monday, which is just half of what they canceled on Sunday. The storm dropped snow from the Gulf Coast to New England and was the second biggest in New York City history, with 26.8 inches measured in Central Park by midnight on Saturday. This was just shy of the 26.9 inches set in 2006. West Virginia was hit with the worst 42 inches recorded in Gregory. On Sunday, temperatures rose above freezing, melting some snow and creating a new hazard, which is black ice. Melting and refreezing will be a common theme this week. So be cautious and watch for black ice in the mornings. This has been Lacey Edwards. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Lacey. Hopefully things get better up along the East Coast, just as they have here locally. After the exit of Pluto some years ago, our solar system has been left with only eight planets. As scientists continue to make discoveries about outer space and our solar system, Emily Toe continues her pursuit of documenting and reporting their findings. Today, Emily has new information about a possibility of a major discovery in our solar system. Researchers at the California Institute of Technology have found evidence that in the outer solar system, there's an object that could resemble another planet. This planet, according to Caltech, has 10 times the mass that Earth has. The researchers Konstantin Batijin and Mike Brown haven't seen the planet, but mathematics and other research helped lead them to conclude that there is one. In the Jupiter belt, there were orbits that pointed in the same direction, which appeared odd. Mathematical modeling and computer stimulation led them to the conclusion that a planet was exerting the gravity necessary to shape these orbits. Brown says there have only been two true planets discovered since ancient times, and this would be a third. It's a pretty substantial chunk of our solar system that's still out there to be found, which is pretty exciting. Unlike Pluto, this new planet, nicknamed Planet 9, is large enough to be considered classified as a true planet according to Caltech. Even though Planet 9 is far out, many telescopes have a shot at finding it. Brown expresses that he wants the planet found 
whether or not he was the one to find it. He hopes that other people are going to get inspired and start searching. This has been Emily Tote reporting for Flyer News. Now, back to the desk. Emily, Flyer News will continue to keep you updated on the findings of scientists regarding our solar system as these revelations continue. In other news, a manhunt is in full swing in California after three inmates escaped an Orange County jail on Friday. This escape has been called very sophisticated. The inmates cut through a quarter-inch metal plate and crawled through unsecured plumbing tunnels to this roof where they cut through steel rebar. Authorities have warned that these men are extremely dangerous. One charged with murder, one for attempted murder, and the other for torturing and kidnapping. Authorities are offering a $50,000 reward for information that leads to the capture of the escaped prisoners. The well thought out and planned escape could have been in the making for weeks or even months. It is suspected that a fight was staged to distract the head count and help these prisoners in their escape. On Monday evening, Boston police were seeking out a 27-year-old suspect who allegedly shot another man that morning over a parking space. The 34-year-old victim was shot in the abdomen in front of 69 Nightingale Street. The victim will fortunately be fine, however, the alleged gunman fled the scene and was not found in the residence he was suspected to be in. The shooter was unhappy with the victim that had parked because he had parked in his parking space after he'd cleared it from snow. Police Commissioner William Evans stated that there's way too many guns, and when people are shooting over a parking spot, we've got a problem. The police know who the suspect is and hope to track him down quick. In other news, New England Patriots had lost to the Denver Broncos, Broncos by a score of 20-18 to 18 in the AFC Championship game this past Sunday. Tough one to watch. With more on that, we have New England Sports Minute with our hosts, Ben and Evan. Good morning, Framingham High School. I'm Ben Weiner. And I'm Evan Maranofsky. And this is New England Sports Minute. So today we're going to be talking the Patriots' surprising loss to the, to the Broncos on Sunday. So, Ev, what, what do you think was the major factor in the loss? Well, there's a lot of factors, and I know you're going to go over some, but the biggest one was Guskowski's missed extra point. I know he's missed like 523 straight, but you know what? When it counted, when it counted most, uh, that did become a factor because the game, by the touchdowns and what the extra points should have been, uh, the game should have ended in a draw. That might have been the one play that signified something, but I personally believe that the biggest reason we lost was the offensive line because this is an offense that regularly scores three or four times a game. The fact that we only scored two touchdowns and a field goal or so, that says something to me when Tom Brady only has two seconds to, th to throw in the pocket. But the major play in this game that I really think was huge was the fourth and one. What do you think of them going for it? I mean, with the clock, with the clock where it was and the score, I actually think going for it was pretty smart. But uh, obviously we see at the end that if we'd gone for that and then got the touchdown at the end, we would have won the game. I'm personally a very aggressive football fan, so I like the idea that we went for it. But I just don't know how I felt about that dinky little Edelman screen. Maybe like, maybe a Tom Brady sneak, maybe a Gronkowski drag. Yeah. Something that wasn't so predictable. And the fact that we weren't running the ball gave the play action less merit, I felt like. Mm -hmm. And finally, how do you think that the Patriots should retool in the offseason? I mean, I think you should draft defensively. But I think that with Calvin Johnson and Alshon Jeffrey out on the market, you might want to get another wide receiver, preferably Calvin Johnson. He's older, uh, has four or five years left. He would want to come uh, with Brady here in New England, uh, and you wouldn't have to pay him as much. So I think having an extra wide receiver like that, just in case you know the others, Edelman, Amendola, or tight end Gronkowski gets hurt, you have someone there to fill in. I definitely agree with that, and I was just thinking very far ahead. NFL draft, I was thinking about Alabama's Derrick Henry, mm -hmm. just because we've had good running backs for years, a lot of like plug and play guys. Yeah. Blunt, we've had Vereen, we've had Lewis, all these guys who are really good at one thing, but we haven't had a workhorse. And I feel like Henry would really keep defenses honest alongside Brady, Gronkowski, Edelman, Amendola, and the rest of the crew. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's one thing to think about as we approach the Patriots offseason. This has been Ben Weiner. I'm Evan Maranofsky. And we're New England Sports Minute. Now it's time for us to pledge the flag. Live in studio today, we have Kevin Lando to lead the pledge. You're up, Kevin.
Please stand for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, FHS. Today is Tuesday, January 26th, a day two with periods winning CADGF. Boys Varsity Wrestling has a home game against Newton North at 5. Boys Varsity Basketball has a home game against Walpole at 6.30. And Girls Varsity Basketball has a, a game at Walpole at 6.45. Also, freshman steering is today in B211 at 2.15. That's it for me. Why not too? Hey guys, this announcement is for Key Club. Thank you to everyone who came out to Miracle Kitchen yesterday, and there will be no meeting today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, on Thursday, we're going to have a military club meeting. Uh, it's in uh, Mr. Marshall's room, E206, I believe. Uh, we have my recruiter, Staff Sergeant Rutherford, coming. Um, so he has some cool stories to tell you, and all the questions can be answered by him. So come down. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How's everyone today? For anyone, ooh, it's crazy down here. For anyone interested in playing baseball, we have off-season workouts today at 4:30 in the Wellness Center. Anyone that's interested in playing baseball today, 4:30 in the Wellness Center. Please show up at like 4:25, just so we're all together before we go in. Also, anyone in NHS that has not submitted their hours, please do so. Whatever amount of hours you have, please submit them. Thank you. The link is in Google Classroom and the Facebook group. Uh, boys basketball has a home game today at 6.30 versus Walpole. Um, we're on a four-game win streak, three-game home win streak, and today's like tonight's the end of our um, home stand, so it would be great if everyone came out tonight. Go Flyers. Good morning, Isabella. How are you? Good. Um, in homeroom today, you should be getting a, another copy of your schedule, a pink one, and it should be including study halls. So some, there was some glitch yesterday, and some students had incomplete schedules, so these should be much more accurate. Um, if it's still not accurate, please make sure that you're making an appointment to see your counselor. Also, the Poetry at Loud competition um, is today for the champions. Um, it's going to be at 2.15 in the library. Um, and finally, we have an announcement from Mr. Carpenter in our technology department. Um, he is. He has created a temporary access for wireless devices to access internet. Um, it's through a temporary network, um, and the SSID number is community, all in caps. So again, the SSID number is community, all in caps. Um, <coughs> it also. It, blah, 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 let's try again. <laughs> um, this also has a password attached to it. The password for this network is public access, no capital letters. So public access. Um, you do need to make sure that um, it's case sensitive. Okay, um, it's only for FHS students and faculty at this point, and it would only be um, allowed in the library and the cafeteria. So once again, it's only for FHS students and faculty, um, and it'll only be allowed in the cafeteria and the library. And that's it for me. Great, see you guys. We've had a very full show today from covering East Coast weather to sports. If you want to watch our show again, you can catch us back at 5 or 8 o'clock on 8 Comcast, 15 RCN, or 41 Verizon Fios. <laughs> I'm Julie Carson. And I'm Ben Weiner. Take it easy, FHS.